So here's our transfer, or our pattern that we're going to transfer. And I'm just going to line up um, to the edge. I didn't want it directly in the middle. I wanted them kind of to one side. And I'm just going to eyeball it. So I have some painter's tape. This is edge lock blue. I also use um, frog tape, etc. I'm just going to tape it down so it doesn't move. For him, I'm going to use white uh, transfer paper. This is graphite paper, and I have it listed on my frequently used tools on my website because I do use it when I'm transferring patterns. You notice it doesn't come all the way down. I'm going to move it. That's what helps the, with the tape being there. That way the pattern doesn't move when I am working on transferring to my surface. So let me get a pen. I like using ballpoint pens. They seem to transfer better than a stylus for me. Now this is a, the canvas moves. It's flexible. So what I do is I get a board. This one's covered because I was painting on it, but I get a board and I put underneath of it and it raises it a bit and makes it firmer so that I can really have a firm touch when I transfer my pattern. Now, I reuse my graphite paper over and over and over. Eventually it starts to wear out and it doesn't transfer very well. This one is doing quite well. So I'm pleased with that. Very pleased with that. So we can keep on going. Now, um, you notice I'm not right directly on the lines. I'm not being perfect because for me, these are guidelines and not like something I have to follow exactly. So, and when we get to painting that, you'll notice I'm not painting exactly on these lines. Making sure my board is still under there. I'm just giving it a good pressure. You could use the black graphite but um, with colors like red and other lighter colors, you just can't um, seem to disguise the black line. So I would have to go very, very lightly with it, which would have a harder time showing on the blue. Um, so that's why I like the white on darker surfaces. It just, for me, works better. and is easier to then obscure. Sometimes I lose my place when I'm yakking of where I have been, so I have to raise it. Especially if I've used the pattern over and over because I've already got lines on it. If I hadn't already used it, I could see where I had drawn my lines. But it's all good because we can continue on. This one needs to move over a little bit. So it's underneath here. Okay, I'll move it down a little bit more. Let me see what I've got going here. So there's my basic outline of my rooster. Works pretty good. Okay, so how long did that take? Not very long at all. And then you can come back and then add in our colors. So that step is done. Here is something I failed to relate and I'm gonna catch up here. You can see we already started other things, but ignore that. Right here, I missed part of my design and when I do my transfers, I'll print out a pattern and then I'll do it on this tracing paper. This one I got, uh, and it's Crayola tracing paper. This is the, the um, same size as printer paper, so it works perfectly for when I'm doing designs, and that way I can easily translate it to um, printer paper. So I'm just going to put this on here.
and I can see my design through here. Now it's not exact and that's okay, but I can get kind of very, very close and I can go in and I can put that section in that I somehow missed when I was transferring the design, probably because I was more focused on videoing than I was on transferring. So it's just this little portion. Yes, I could draw it in. I was just showing you, if you're not comfortable drawing it in, how you can go in and add something you've missed if you discover you have. And let me see if everything else is on there. Yes. Now it doesn't match up perfectly. That's all right. It's all going to come in together as we paint it. But I just wanted to show you that little trick.